Hello, welcome to Einstein's Mechanics. In this episode, we are going to solve one interesting problem under stress and strain in 3D. Now we are going to consider an object in all the axis x, y, and the z direction. So we are going to make some critical analysis. You have to pay attention and follow. So we have the question here, a compressive or a compression member. So first, the impression here is we have a compression member. 0 0.3 meter long has a rectangular cross section, 150 millimeter by 100. It passes through a slot in a rigid block as shown in the diagram. So we have the diagram given such that there is a complete restraint in the x direction. Please pay attention here. It says there is a complete restraint in the x direction. Therefore, we are going to take into account no change of dimension can take place in the x direction. There is, however, no restriction of movement in the y direction. All these are very important for you to understand what you are going to do. There's also no restriction or no restriction of movement in the y direction, but there is restriction in the x direction. If a load of 3,800 kN is applied to the member as shown, we are to calculate the stress in the x direction, the strain in the y direction, and the strain in the z direction. Let's assume that the E modulus given is 200 kilonewton per millimeter square. So the E is in what? The Young modulus is in millimeter square. And Poisson's ratio V is also 0 0.3. So look at the diagram carefully. We are given the axis, respective axis here, such that we know the direction which is X, the direction which is Y, and the direction which is z and this is also our diagram this member is undergoing what a compressive stress so let's see what we can do so from critical analysis and the information provided let's write some parameters down and begin our work so what can we say from this 3d we are expecting that if this block or this rectangular block is undergoing some compression, we are expecting that we should have strain in the x direction. We should have stress in the x direction, strain in the y direction, stress in the y direction, strain in the z direction, stress in the z direction. So we are expecting six things to happen. For each direction or each axis, we are expecting a stress and a corresponding strain. Are we okay? And based on what the question is saying, let's look at what we can take out. It says that in the block provided, there is a complete restraint in the X direction. There is a complete restraint in the x direction. So what does that mean? If there is a restraint in a particular direction, meaning there is no movement, right? Yes. So movement, the change in the length of a body is a stress or strain. That corresponds to the strain. So meaning at the x direction, there is no movement because it's even here. Therefore, no change in dimension can take place in the x direction therefore strain in the x direction will run to zero are we okay all right let's look at this parameter also it says therefore or there is however no restriction of movement in the y direction in the y direction there is no restriction of movement meaning there can be what a strain it is permitted to move but is there any stress in that place or that axis? No, because looking at the axis provided, 
the vertical component is the Z and the applied force is also vertical. So if you are applying the force in the vertical direction and you are saying the Y, which is this direction, can move, it can strain, but there will be no stress in that direction. Stress only occurs in a member when there is what? Two forces. Let's see if it is compressive this way. If it is tensile, two forces this way. For the Y direction, which is the vertical component, looking from the axis here, there will be what? A stress. Are you okay? There will be a stress. So what we have to now know in the Y direction is that it can strain all right, but there will not be what? A stress. So we can also send the stress in Y direction to zero. From the question, there is no restricting force because the force is only applied in the C direction. Is that clear? So now we have some parameters running to zero. Let's check out for the others. If you pay attention, it is very simple and clear. So if I want to redraw the diagram again, then I can draw the diagram this way. So I have it this way, like this, and I have is like that. Looking at the axis given, this is the reference point, the axis, the x direction, there's a complete restraint. So we are restricting this area not to move. The other end is also not going towards move. But this part has the ability to what? move. This is not a force. I'm just showing direction of what? Movement. The only force applied here is the vertical force on the z direction. Is that okay? Now we have some force given. We also have some force given that the force that was applied, let's call it P, in the Z direction is given as 3800 kilo Newton. And this rectangular bar or rectangular block has a length or cross section area. So let's look at the area. It is given as 150 by 100 or in what? Millimeter square. All these parameters are there. So now that we have all this, what can we calculate for? We can calculate for stress in the Z direction, right? Stress in the Z direction is just the force applied in that direction over the area of the body. From the question, the stress we can know because the force in the z direction is 3800 kilonewton and what is the area the area is 150 or we can convert everything to meters so 152 meters that is going to be 0 0.15 100 to meters that is going to be 0 0.10 and this is going to give us a stress in the z direction as negative 253.33 mega pascal are we okay negative because it is a compression the member is in compression so the force is what a compressive stress or the stress is a compressive one this can also be written as negative 253.33 if we still want to work in the millimeter, that is Newton per millimeter square. So we have all these given. Now let's come to the other part. The first part is that we should calculate the stress in the x direction. Now, with no stress in the z direction, we know that stress in the y direction is also zero. Let's find the stress in the x direction. So, from Hooke's law, from the previous episode, we were able to bring out an equation that links all the axes together in terms of stresses and strains, linking the Poisson's ratio. What I mean is, anytime we have a three dimensional body undergoing any kind of stress, 
we can link the x axis to the y axis to the z axis in terms of its stress and it is very simple let's look at it so from hooke's law from hooke's law anytime we have a 3d body like this and you want to find the stress the strain i'm focusing on the x now so let me take the x now this is the equation always the strain in the x direction are we okay is going to be since i'm interested in the x it is also going to be the stress in that direction which is x over the e minus poisson's ratio the stress in the y direction on e minus poisson's ratio the stress in the z direction over the e so if you want strain in a particular direction this is the relation since i'm interested in the x the x will come first you negate the rest with the poisson ratio so from this expression can i send some of them to zero yes because we say that or uh, we saw from the expression that stress in the y direction is zero meaning the whole of this part will run to zero is that true yes that is true we also have anything that will run to zero yes strain in the x direction will also run to zero because there's no movement so we only have this part and this part so we can say that stress in x on e should be equal to we can if we make the subject that is going to be stress in the z on e so there's e at both sides it can cancel out giving us which implies that stress in the x should be equal to the poisson's ratio stress in the z direction so this is the relation to find for stress in the x direction so we can say that stress in the x direction is going to be what is the poisson's ratio the poisson's ratio is 0 0.3 and what is the stress in the z we've already calculated for it as negative 253.33 newton per millimeter square or either in mega pascal i would prefer to work in the newton millimeter square so it is a compressive force so that is negative 253.33 newton per millimeter square therefore stress in the x direction is also going to be giving us negative 76 newton per millimeter square so the first part stress in the x direction is established so let's look at the strain in the z direction how are we also going to calculate for the strain now the strain with the same equation that links all the three axes together using the strain and stress we can say that the b part which is interested in strain in the z direction should be equal to stress in the z that we are interested in over the e minus v stress in the y on e minus v stress in the x direction right on the e now we can send this part to zero because stress in the y is zero are you okay then we can have this expression as strain in the z direction should be equal to stress in z on the young modulus minus poisson's ratio stress in x everything on the e are we good so now here we are going to put in the values we saw that the stress in z is now giving us negative two five 3.33 over the e the e given is giving us 200 to the power positive 3. the reason why i prefer to work in the newton millimeter is that when you check the e given was 200 kilo newton per millimeter square so if you don't work in uniformity you're going to get it wrong so my stress is in newton millimeter square 
my E is in Newton millimeter squared. They will cancel out. Remember, strain has no units, so they can cancel out. So negative, what is Poisson's ratio, which is 0 0.3? What is the stress in the x direction? We just calculated for that one as negative 76. The same thing, E, which is 200 to the power 3. So when you punch this, you are going to get your answer as 1.152 to the power negative 3. So this is the strain in the z direction. Are you okay? All right. So we can, this will be negative. Yes, because when you check the negative 76 and this unit, it is going to be plus. And when you punch everything, you should get a negative 1.152 to the power negative 3. Now, the C part, which says we should find the strain in the y direction. We are going to use the same equation. So you have to let this equation stick with you. So we are interested in strain in y. So that is going to be stress in y on E minus Poisson ratio where we are going to have stress in any of it so x e minus v stress in z on e then again this will run to zero because stress in y was zero we are going to get the strain in y to be we can bring the negative v e out and say stress in x plus stress in z so we are going to have negative 0 0.3 on 200 to the power 3 now the stress is x is negative 76 and this is also negative 253.33 and when you punch everything your strain is going to be 0 0.494 to the power negative 3. So this is the strain in the y direction. Are we okay? So this is very interesting. You can see that with a diagram, there will be a strain in the y direction because it's a compressive force. It is going to compress it. So there will be a change in what? The movement or there will be a change in length, size, and also. At the z direction, there's going to be a movement in the length or the size. But we saw that the x is not going to have any strain because it is restricted. And the y stress is also going to zero because there was no restriction or no resistant force inside that or at that direction it is very simple when you pay attention you get it thank you for watching this episode kindly subscribe to the channel check out for the next check out for the next example